The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to explain indemnification clauses. Uh, an indemnification clause can be a standalone agreement or it can be a clause in a larger contract that is used to transfer risk of liability from one party to another. So when you agree to indemnif indemnify someone, you're stating that if you or your agents do certain things that result in the other party experiencing a monetary loss, you're going to re reimburse the other party for that loss. Um, some examples of when you would use an indemnification clause are independent contractor agreements. So if my business is hiring someone to be an independent contractor uh, and I'm not going to have a whole lot of oversight over them, uh, the independent contractor might agree that if anybody uh, sues me based on the work that they are doing for me, they're going to indemnify me, which means that they're going to cover the cost of the lawsuit um, and pay for the attorney and handle any damages and pay, reimburse me for any damages that result from a lawsuit. So any, any monetary damage, whether it's attorney's fees, court costs, um, other out-of-pocket costs or payments that I have to make to settle a lawsuit, the independent contractor is going to indemnify me for and they're going to handle, uh, and that's one of the things that makes me secure in hiring them. Another example of when you might use an indemnification clause is when you're selling a business. So when you sell a business or really any other asset uh, that can cause liability, um, the person who is purchasing the business might indemnify the person selling the business for any claims based on actions that took place after the sale. So if someone goes and if uh, someone is suing the person that sold the business for something that happened after the sale, then the purchaser will cover all of their court costs and attorney's fees and any, any damages that uh, come out of that. The flip side is that the person selling the business might indemnify the purchaser for any claims that come against the purchaser for, uh, of the business for actions that took place prior to the sale, and they'll agree to cover the costs and expenses of that. So it's basically when you've got a, a business arrangement and you want to assign one side to be liable for certain types of things, and maybe the other s side is liable for other types of things. With a sale and purchase of a business, you have a clear defining date where anything after that date one side is going to be responsible for, regardless of who is actually sued, and everything before that date uh, the other side is going to be responsible for. Um, you want to be clear about what the clause covers when you have an indemnification clause. It might be, it might cover negligence. It might cover only gross negligence of the party that is in indemnifying the other, which is more negligence than simple negligence. It might, it might not cover neg negligence at all, but simply intentional wrongful conduct. Or it could cover all claims of a particular type, regardless of the type of conduct. So in the independent contractor context, the contractor might indemnify the business for uh, only its own negligent or intentionally wrongful behavior, or it might be any claims that result at all from the work of the independent contractor. So you want to be clear about what level rises uh, or what rises to the level that would trigger the indemnification clause. Is it negligence? Is it an intentional conduct? Is it conduct? Is it gross negligence? Is it any claim of any sort related to the business relationship? Uh, you also want to make clear when you have an indemnification clause who it applies to and whose actions it applies to. So um, one thing you want to do is it's not if you've got a business involved in an in indemnity, excuse me, in an indemnification clause, easy for me to say, uh, then you're going to not only have the business covered, you're going to have any agents, officers, employees of the business. Um, you're going to have successors of the business. People who purchase the business are going to also be covered by the indem indemnification clause, and that goes both ways. So if uh, my business, O'Flaherty Law, is indemnifying another business, uh, say I'm a c an independent contractor for another law firm, we're g they're going to want to make sure that it's not only my actions personally as Kevin O'Flaherty, owner of O'Flaherty Law, uh, that are, they're indemnified for, but any of my employees or agents or any uh, other person that's affiliated with O'Flaherty Law. And if I sell O'Flaherty Law, they want to be indemnified for whoever purchases O'Flaherty Law and their actions as well. And you want that to kind of go both ways. You want any successors of the person who is indemnified, the person who's going to benefit from the indemnifi indemnification clause, any successors to be protected by it as well. 
um, and any employees, agents, or officers. So if someone's sued on a personal level for the actions of, of someone else who indemnified them, you want to make sure that they are covered by the indemnification clause, not just the business. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. If you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.